Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you want to design and build a beautiful website, you can do it all in one place with Squarespace. Today we're going to the hardware store. I'm prepping for our trip to Cambodia. I'm going to be painting a school, but I need to go get some house paint so that I can test out the layering that I'm planning on doing and make sure it's all good before we go. Is that all we're getting? No, I'm getting a small plank of pine wood. Oh yeah, plywood. Why are you getting, why are you getting uh, pine? Uh, pine, Ply, pine plywood? <laughs> I am for <laughs> pan. <laughs> Let's do it. Blinding colors, please. Oh, I'm taking this instead. I'll take these two. <laughs> this is what I need. Sean, come on. Two thousand years later. Hmm. I guess I should get magnolia cream, even though I want to get blushing peach. I'm getting blushing. Okay. I'm getting magnolia cream. It's so similar. It's so different. This one is more of a pink. This is a more of a yellow. good in this light. We're going to Chris's show and Chris is one of my favorite people in the whole world. He's having his first solo show. He's helped me have my first show when he ran the Tate. My second show was Good Space. He helped hundreds of artists do the same. He helped me have my first studio space and he helps me every dang day with my emails, my store orders and all that stuff. So we're going to support him because he deserves it and he's a very talented guy. When you watch the set, that, the, the vlog. Hi Chris, we're so proud of you. Thank you so much for all you've done for us at the Creative Community in Sydney, and you're the best. You're freaking the best, Chris. I love you, Chris. Uh, you're my uh, god. Yeah, what she said. Yeah, you're the best. that I did some tests for my mural, but I wasn't really happy with the look of the white paint over the color. So I asked around, they suggested instead of using a brush that I use for art stuff, so instead of these brushes that are really, really soft, they may not be rigid enough for the house paint that we'll be using to use hardware store brushes. So I went and bought some of these. This one was pretty expensive. This one costs like $20, but it's super, super soft. So I'm gonna test how good that is. And then like, these ones are $2, so I wanna see the difference. I'm gonna do another test on the back of this, as well as like trying out chalking shapes down instead of just doing it freehand like I would on watercolor.
You have to hire her back, and that's how she gets back on the floor. Meals, avoiding stress, a schedule. These are the things that have been working so far for you. At least call Dr. Rosenberg before you make a decision. Oh, I've already decided. I don't understand how you can trust these people for one minute after what they did to you. I trust Saul. He'll be there to hold my hand. And There's a little sweet shoulder days. you have there. Thanks, baby. Squarespace for sponsoring this video. I know you guys have heard me talking about Squarespace and I'm sure you've heard a lot of other cool people talking about it too, but that's because it is amazing. It's basically a website building platform that allows you to create beautiful websites from scratch using templates that are highly customizable in terms of color, adding logos, different fonts. There's definitely a template that's there for you, whether you're an illustrator like me, you're a photographer like Rocket. I'm just really, really thankful that I waited for a sponsor that I truly, truly believe in and truly have been using for the last four years. So thank you again, Squarespace, and for everyone that's using my code, squarespace.com slash peach, you get a free trial and a 10% discount. So thank you, Squarespace. Let's check what questions you guys sent. Hi, Sean. I mean, hey, Sean. Do you find that you work better with background noise, like a TV show playing in the background or music while you work? Yes and no, I do like having things in the background. Uh, it really depends what I'm doing. Sometimes it's unwise for me to have stuff in the background. I'm like drawing, I try to concentrate and then I'm like, over the years that I've found that I'm very good with podcasts and music for when I'm doing ideation and coming up with concepts and stuff like that and sketches. When it comes to creative thinking, I'm better with stuff that's only listening. But when it comes to long-winded practical work, it's a lot easier for me to work when I have a TV show. It helps me zone out and helps that like long night after night after night feel a little bit quicker. What are you currently reading? So I, in my last favorites video, if you saw it, you'll know that I was reading Fight Like a Girl by Clementine Ford, which I highly recommend. This week, a friend of mine, Jess Cruikshank, came over. She's an illustrator slash letterer. And she brought over this book that I had my eye on in the bookstore, but didn't end up buying. And when I found out she had it, I was like, please let me borrow it. So this is The Illustrated Dust Jacket, 1920 to 1970. Basically, this is like old graphic design. So like very heavily illustrative, traditional mediums of painting and traditional illustrations, but they are so cool. Like every single page is amazing. I would love to do heavily illustrated book cover design, which is something that I haven't really done yet, but that's on my hit list for things I'd like to do. So this book is gonna help me refresh my idea of what composition can be, what book covers can be. There's a lot of stuff with illustration that has been lost over time. And this is just like a gentle reminder of how awesome it was. It might be in my peachy post this month, which is late. How did you decide to start doing what you do? I'm stuck in a nine to five job I don't like and I would rather be drawing. I don't know how to get started though. My parents worry about steady income. I totally understand that from their perspective. Freelancing is not very stable and if you can get to a point where you can live off it, you are very, very lucky. A lot of people that I know that are freelance creatives actually have part-time jobs and I don't think there's any shame in that. So if you can handle doing your nine to five and then doing drawing the rest of the time, at least at the beginning, that's really gonna help you as opposed to jumping straight in and not knowing what um, workload you can handle, what where you can earn extra income and stuff like that. So I would just suggest drawing now after hours and on weekends and sharing it online. I decided to, to go full-time freelance when I was getting enough work while, while I was in a design job. It does take a while and I would suggest having a stable income on the side and then having a feel about how you wanna structure your drawing work. What is your all-time favorite movie? Definitely Moonrise Kingdom. I feel like I've said that so many times, but Moonrise Kingdom is the best. What is your all-time favorite color palette? This. Hi Sean, hope you're doing well. Do you have any music suggestions? Yes. Rock and I were in the car the other day and on the radio, we heard them say that this kid was 15 and we're like, oh, okay, let's hear him. And it was amazing. I think it's by rule and he's like a 15 year old kid, but his voice is like James Arthur mixed with Harry Styles. Every time we put it on, I'm like, how is he 15? I don't get it. I know you're quite an established illustrator, but what advice would you give a less known artist who's trying to gain a following on social media? It can be very discouraging to put work out there 
when there is little to no interaction slash feedback in return. So there's always things you can do. Obviously, everyone knows that you can put hashtags on your photos so people can find your work. You can communicate with other emerging artists. But I think the best thing to do would be to restructure what you're what you want or what you're looking for from your work. So if you're objective is to gain a following on social media and to get um, attention for your work it's probably not the best priority to have because it can take years to get there and that means you need to sit through being disappointed all the time for example i was probably had tumblr for a couple of years before i had the following that i had there and then even still on instagram i've been on instagram for like five years and I, that's how long it's taken me to get and that's posting quite a lot it does take a long time friends who have gone viral and who have just like exploded overnight but it didn't happen like that for me and i think that's a more sustainable way so what i would do is work on creating great work um, working on your tone of voice expressing who you actually are in the captions and communicating with people whose work you love let people know when you love their work it helps one thing i would say though when i see people tagging a bunch of people in photos including myself it kind of is very annoying and if people comment on my photos spamming their accounts on my photos it, that's also very annoying like i i don't feel inclined to look at your work and i'm sure if you dm people and let them know you love their work they're gonna be like who is this person because i'm that stalkery internet person i love lurking and finding out like who everyone is but yeah i would suggest one making great work two not expecting that you're gonna get a huge following straight away and talk to your peers finding the platform that works for you so for me it's youtube Instagram. Someone that's vlogging may not have a huge following on Instagram because they can't translate their personality through a photo and through a caption, whereas on screen they're really, really bubbly, really bright, really fun, and really engaging. So never rule out like a new social platform because it could be the one for you that kind of explodes. Hi Sean, do you have a certain sketch or motif you go back to whenever you're feeling artist block? Can't wait to see the vlog. Well, for me, it's definitely animals. I just think A, nature is the best source of inspiration. B, there are so many reference images online and so much to learn. Like there's always gonna be an animal you haven't drawn yet. So for me, when I'm stuck and I don't know what to draw, but I know that I should be practicing or I feel like I want to draw without any idea of what I want, I just Google any animal. Watch a nature documentary, do some quick sketches there. It kind of is a really, really good warm up. That's about it. Update wise, I will be working on a very another very late PT post. I might just have to skip this month because I'm actually super, super busy. Rock and I just joined a gym. I don't know what's going on there. We'll see if we can keep it up or if it's just a huge waste of money for us. We're going to Cambodia in a week. Um, I'm speaking at Sydney Writers Festival, which is a huge, huge honor because it's like filled with super legit authors and like children's book illustrators that I admire, including Sean Tan. Oh my god. Um, Sunday the 6th, I'm doing a reading at the Storytime Clubhouse. And then I also am participating in an illustrator battle rounds, which basically I'm versing other children's book illustrators drawing live on stage. So if you are free on Sunday, um, there are tickets to the battle rounds and then the reading is of course free. Well, thank you so much to everyone who bought a copy of Zoom. We'll be sending them out very shortly. Probably when this video goes, goes up, you would have gotten a confirmation email or you will have the next day after this video goes up. Also, thank you to everyone who bought stickers from me. They're doing really, really well and I love them so much. I love seeing you guys open them and seeing you put put them on things and stuff like that. So please, um, if you want to support me and my channel, my store is the best place to do that. And yeah, it's 11.25 p.m. I've got pajamas on, did you know? Did you even know, looking professional up top and made up, but I'm just about to go into the shower and then I'm gonna go to sleep. Thank you for watching my video all the way to the end. I don't know how many people actually stay till the end. Bye, bye, bye. How do I turn this off?